What's up you guys? Today I wanted to go over a couple different kinds of nest boxes and some context clues you can use to figure out what might be in there. Really I was prompted to make this video because when I'm out on the trails or even just out at my local bird sanctuary there's almost always a myriad of different nest boxes out there and it's a little confusing trying to understand which one is for which species or you know what to keep your eyes open for. And so really in this video we're going to go over five different types of boxes uh, go over a couple of the nuances in terms of location, size, and mounting that you can use to really quickly determine what that box is supposed to be for. Now right off the bat, the first box we're going to get into is that for the bluebird. Now this box works for both eastern bluebirds, but also mountain and pacific bluebirds. Uh, but really, in my case, on the eastern half of the United States, what you're going to see here is the eastern bluebird. It is a strikingly blue-backed bird with this sort of burnt orange chest. And the important things to consider in this situation really is location. Now, eastern bluebirds really need more of an open, grassy field. This is really important for them to be able to find the proper insects that they need. And so take a look at your surroundings. If you feel like you see a nest box and you're deep in the woods, it's almost certainly not for a bluebird. But if you're even just on the edge of the woods with a little bit of sparse shrubbery, there's a relatively good chance that this box could in fact be for an eastern bluebird. It's really your traditional square box with a roof that opens up. You'll notice that the diameter on this box is a little bit larger than some that you might see more in forested or shrubbery prone areas. Um, and really that's just because the eastern bluebird's a relatively large bird. I would say it's about cardinal size. Now bouncing right off of this eastern bluebird box, you were really going to borrow almost the same exact design, same size, same positioning, but instead we're going to change up that diameter size, get it down to about one and one fourth inch, and we're going to use this for nut hatches, titmice, wrens, and chickadees. Okay, and again, placement is huge. Wrens and chickadees are really going to pursue more areas with deeper thicket, particularly wrens. And so if you see a box with a slightly smaller hole than you would anticipate for an eastern bluebird, and it's in a more of an area with some dense thicket, know that this is an indicator that it's likely for wrens. Now if this box is instead placed in more of a mixed deciduous forest, uh, with a dense canopy, you can expect it to house either titmice or some nuthatch. And now it's either the nuthatch variety, it can be white-breasted or red-breasted nuthatch, really just depending on the region and what sort of proliferates in that area. Now the reason it's so important to have a one and a quarter inch hole is because one of the biggest concerns when putting up a nest box and hoping that it's successful is evading some of the natural predators and some of the competition that they have for particular nesting spots. And so this one and a quarter inch is just small enough to keep out the house sparrow. We've talked about house sparrows in some other videos and how they've just been hugely invasive and destructive to a lot of the native bird species that we have here in North America. And a house sparrow needs a hole of at least one and a half inches. Now the next style of boxes that I wanted to bring up is that for the purple martin. I think that maybe this is almost in competition with the eastern bluebird for the most popular nest box that you'll see and it really sort of comes in two different designs. One almost looks like a tiny apartment complex for these purple martins. You'll see it relatively close to an open body of water. Again, similar to the eastern bluebird, it needs a more open grassy area and it might have these small little perches with a hole just a few inches above. Now the other style for a purple martin is those hollowed out gourds. You may see them hanging from a big pole in groups of five or ten and that's really the more traditional approach towards housing purple martins. The history of why we house purple martins is actually pretty unique. Uh, they're relatively large, swift-like birds that eat plenty of those insects that humans don't really enjoy, and so humans have actually been putting up artificial housing for these purple martins for years. Now, the art of hanging the gourds actually goes back to the Native Americans, and we've really inhabited putting up these more condo-looking apartment style for the Purple Martins or just following up with the gourds. But because they've relied on this artificial housing for so much, east of the Great Plains, there is no suitable habitat for a Purple Martin besides what people put out for it. Now, if you're really trying to make the decision between what might be living in there, know that the Purple Martin boxes have a very unique style and are also generally in an open field close to a body of water. 
Sticking with this theme of bodies of water, the next box that I want to talk about is a wood duck box. Now, I'd actually done a little bit of wood duck nest monitoring in my time, but learned a few facts when I was making this video that I wasn't exactly expecting. Now, this is a larger size box. Obviously, we've transitioned from tit mice and wrens to full-on wood ducks, and so it's a little bit larger, but a few unique characteristics you might see about this box, aside from its large size, is that instead of a circular hole, it has an oval hole. Now really this is intended to keep out raccoons. It's again a predator that might uh, go in and, and eat some of the eggs or just make it not um, a successful nest site for these wood duck boxes. Now the other thing to think about with wood duck box placement, and I found this to be pretty interesting, is that it's most successful if it's either placed physically in the water, on a pole higher up in this wetland area, or 30 to 100 feet from the water. Following this design has actually been shown to be the most successful for wood ducks. For whatever reason, if a box is placed just right on the cusp of the water, it's not very successful and, and they don't breed very well. It really is either in the water or 30 to 100 feet back. And you can know that if you're near sort of a wetlands area, you see a larger box with an oval hole, you can indicate that this is more than likely a wood duck nest box. Now the last one that I wanted to go over is another pretty large bird, and that's an eastern screech owl. This box I actually see placed fairly regularly too, um, and it can be delineated from some of these smaller boxes for eastern bluebirds or chickadees because it's a larger bird right off the bat, but also it'll be placed in a much different area. You'll be seeing this box really 15 to 50 feet above the ground, and what's really unique about the eastern screech owl box is that it needs to be placed in an area that's you know relatively forested but it can be almost more suburban it could be your local park or a small plot of land in the city area what's really important is that there's an open line of sight getting in and out of the box because this owl is going to be flying back in and flying back out and it needs to have a little bit of an open clearing so you're going to really know that this isn't a bluebird box or a purple martin box because of how high it will be placed up that it doesn't necessarily need to be by water at all and that it needs an open line of passage right before it goes in now really i could have taken this video a ton of different ways and there are tons of specifics that are dealing with particular nest boxes but i felt like breaking it down into these five categories would be the easiest for everyone to understand the most important things to look for is where you are how the box is mounted, how high is it off the ground, and what's the size of the hole. Know that all of these different techniques and placements are really just to try to have the most successful nesting site for these native species. I mean, again, it is these birds like the house sparrow and the European starling that have made competition so fierce and really driven down a lot of the populations for some of these native birds that we really know and love. If you guys appreciated this video, please hit that like button, subscribe. I really appreciate it. You can find us on Instagram at stopandlisten.channel. Sound off in the comments about any bird boxes you see or maybe if you've been involved in any bird box nest monitoring programs. You know, if you think there's anything I missed, please let me know. I'd be happy to make another follow-up video. Thanks, guys.